when the Germans came into Poland, into Warsaw, the youth organized in an illegal way, in illegal groups. All the years in the ghetto, when the wall was put up, life of the ghetto was an active resistance. It was at that time a resistance for life, for a dignified way of life. Because when the ghetto was put up and we were cut off from the other side, from the Polish side, we were not able to make a living. And starvation started and typhoid epidemic. So to live, to survive as human being, to struggle, and to be able to keep yourself on the ghetto surface was, in a way, my understanding when I look back, a resistance. A resistance which is spiritual, e uh, physically. But the philosophy in ghetto at that time was to survive and to live through. And in my estimation, this was resistance, daily struggle for life as a human being was resistance. And I would say if other forms of resistance took place later, it was because the life in the ghetto was the form, was a chain of resistance. There were illegal schools. There were illegal libraries, choirs, even theaters, even uh, there were people writing bulletins, political publications. It was an illegal life going on. What I had in mind when I talk about resistance, daily life, I recall my mother with puffed up under the eyes from starvation. And she was hiding a piece of bread that for us children, my father died already. And she was hiding for whom? For the old rabbi who used to come to my brother to prepare him for bar mitzvah, which he never lived to have. And hiding this piece of bread, when I look back, I see this was strength. She didn't eat it. She was starving. She had to puffed up under the eyes, little, little things. And this person remembered to give this piece of bread for, for a teacher, for an old teacher for my brother. This was strength and this was resistance. And she was not the only one. As a young girl, I belong to the illegal group of the youth organization, the Tsukum. And because I had the so-called Polish features, the organization decided to send me out on the other part of the ghetto, to the Aryan site. My mission at that time, my task was to make contacts with the Polish people, to try to find out on the illegal black market, guns, dynamite, to try to find out places where to hide the Jewish children, if it's possible to take them out, smuggle them out from the ghetto and hide them. And also to contact other people in camps, in walking camps in other cities. At that time, I was 16 years old. It was natural that certain walks and activities which has to be done, and I can participate in with my so-called Polish futures and, and quite fluent Polish, I can do something essential, important. So it was natural that the mission on the Aryan side, I have to fulfill. It was no question about it. It was the way of life. And I was not the only one. The young people in the ghetto, they were really the driving force. They became the leaders, the decisive force during the time of the deportation. 
And we learned in the beginning, we didn't know that it's really gas chambers. I remember, although in the underground, we did know that in Kolo, in further smaller towns, they are killing Jews or they are gassing Jews. Everybody of us in Warsaw, as the capital, was thinking that after all, it's the capital. It's an open, big city. How will they dare to do it to the Jews in the Warsaw ghetto? It cannot happen here. And when my mother and brother was taken away, I was still thinking that I remember the days that maybe, maybe after all, they are resettled in another town, as the German claimed, that they are not going to labor camps even, but just resettlement. It's very difficult to believe in things which you were never prepared that this can happen to your closest one with whom you lived constantly all your life. You knew them. You were part of them. But later on, we knew the truth, and we decided to choose our own way of dying. People talk about dignity, about heroism. I don't know. This kind of expression, for me personally, it didn't exist. It was the, day, the way how we understood. We understood they are going to kill us, so we will choose our way of dying. When I came to the States from Poland, and I heard the, the myth that the Jews were passive, or that the Jews went like sheep to the slaughter, I, it was hurting me, because it was really untrue. It was a deep desire that the people in the world should know about the life which was destroyed, about the world which was destroyed, not only during the war, but also to let them know before the war what kind of colorful, cultural, high level, socially, ethical, traditional life it was. After all, our, our number is diminishing of survivors. Who will tell the story later on? Who will continue to tell the truth, the historical truth? And it's why I came to the conclusion to look and to start organize teachers. They should teach in the schools. They should teach together with global history or social studies or current events. Also, what took place? We have people who deny the Holocaust. For them, it didn't take place. War, it was war, they killed people, but there were no gas chambers. So where, where, where did the six million perish? Children, grow up. And teachers know not too much here in the United States about the Holocaust. Years ago, they were just here in their, in their history books, a line, a paragraph, but not too much. I started among the teachers to find people who would like to implement Holocaust studies in their classes. We organized a project to make a three-week seminar on Holocaust in Jewish resistance in Israel. So people were asking, why in Israel? After all, in the States, you can find professors, you can find the right scholars. But the idea was that when you talk about destruction, about death, about guest chambers and crematoria, you should also see continuation of Jewish life, or vital Jewish life in Israel. And then you will understand the concern of Jews all over for the security of Israel and also for the importance of going on of Jewish culture and tradition. We started with 28 teachers only of New York. Now we have about 341 teachers went through. 
from 40 states all over America. We are having a stop in Poland where teachers are visit, visiting and looking at the former concentration camps, Auschwitz, Majdanek, Treblinka, and also places of Jewish life, former Jewish life. So the teachers are looking and touching history. Remind us what it can happen to other people, to other minorities. And teachers are preparing the young people. And after all, in the hand of the young is the future of our humanity. So it's why I consider very important. And it is a very successful project and now by over 80,000 students are being reached through our teachers who are implementing Holocaust studies in the schools. I think it's a mission which is important in connection to remember, in connection also to learn and to prevent for the future.